Hi, I'm Angela Barnes. I am doing my solo show, Come As You Are, at the uh, Pleasance Courtyard at 8.50. Wow, that's a difficult question. I, um, when I was growing up, I went through phases of all sorts of things, everything from astronaut, I think, to a dancer. To, but the one thing that I did end up doing that I wanted to be, I think because it was in my family, was to be a nurse. Well, my mum worked, she did lots of stuff. She worked in the NHS, but mainly in administration. My dad, <laughs> this is a funnier story. My dad had lots of jobs, um, including uh, he was a salesman for many years. Um, but the final job he had uh, was he managed a sex shop for a living. So <laughs> I don't know if I can say that to you, but there we go. That's what my dad did for a living. I did not want to follow in those footsteps. <laughs> My first ever job, oh god, I worked in a terrible, terrible Greasy Spoon cafe uh, in Maidstone, which is the town I grew up in, and it was called Santini's, and it was run by, uh, there's an Italian man and his South American wife, and, um, and I got paid two pounds an hour uh, just to serve coffees and clean tables, and it was pretty grim. <laughs> My greatest achievement is, well, just being able to be a comedian. I mean, I still can't quite believe that I can make a living out of mucking about and that people let me do this. So I feel like I've already won because this is my job. So, uh, you know, brilliant. And, and anything that happens along the way is just an added bonus. Um, I guess I have to say that the highlight so far was in 2011 when I won the BBC New Comedy Award. Because um, up to that point, I was just a you know hobby comic, really. And that was the point where it's suddenly like, oh God, I can actually make a career out of this. I seem to be all right at it. My biggest regret as a comedian? I don't think, I don't think I've had many regrets because there's no point in regret. It just, you know, you just learn from your mistakes. I think as a comic, particularly, the bad gigs, the bad decisions that you make are definitely the things that you learn from and go forward. So I've done some shows I probably shouldn't have done. I did um, uh, a show in 2012. I got involved in the Radio 2 Live in Hyde Park event that I was booked for for some reason. I don't know whose idea it was. And I ended up having to go on stage in front of 35,000 people uh, after Tom Jones and before Jesse J. Um, so, you know, I could look back and say that was a regret, but it formed the end of my Edinburgh show last year, so I managed to get something good out of it. And I think that's the nice thing about being a comic. When something bad happens, you can turn it into something funny and, and it will make it into your show. <laughs> Best advice I've ever been given is really simple advice, and that's just don't be a dick. Like, it's really simple. It's say your pleases and thank yous. When you do a gig, even if it doesn't go well, you find the person who booked you and you say, thank you very much for having me, sorry I wasn't my best or whatever, you know, and just be somebody that people want to work with. Because if you're difficult to work, we're all just trying to make a living, you know, people who work, whether you work in TV production or in comedy clubs or wherever people work, they're just doing a job like, like we are. And so just be someone people want to work with and just don't, don't be a pain in the backside. If I could have any job, oh my goodness me. I think I would love to work, I love dogs. I've got a real thing, and I can't have a dog at the moment because I travel around a lot and everything, it's not practical. So I think I'd love to work at Battersea Dogs Home. That would be my, I'm quite allergic to dogs, so probably not practical. But that's what I, just the idea of spending a day walking dogs and the reality of cleaning the shit up, obviously, is not what's in my head. But yeah, spending a day with dogs, that'd be my ideal job. When I'm not working, I am exceedingly lazy. Um, I've become lazy. I, I do. I learned to swim last year, so that's something I've become a bit obsessed with. I do love swimming, and I've just started getting into outdoor swimming. Um, so I've been doing a lot of that this summer, and hoping to do more while I'm here in Edinburgh. Um, a, a lot of the time that I'm not actually performing is spent stressing about performing, or or writing, or stressing that I'm not writing. That's what I seem to spend a lot of time doing. First thing I do in the morning is uh, it's terrible. I was thinking about this the other day because the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is reach for my phone, which is if that was a bottle of vodka I was reaching for, people would worry about me, wouldn't they? The first thing I do is seem to check Twitter, which I hate myself for doing that. Um, the last thing at night, I, I always read before I go to sleep. I think it's really important to. You know, sometimes we work quite late as comics, so you get home sometimes two, three in the morning. It's difficult just to go straight to bed. It's like coming home from the office and going straight to bed. So I'll just tend to have a cup of Horlicks. Oh God, I'm so rock and roll. Have a Horlicks and read my book and, and just chill out and, and that's the last thing I do. 
My girl, oh, okay, this is easy, this is. I am a huge fan of the Archers on Radio 4. I know, I, I, and it's, I can tell people that now. I'm not ashamed, it's brilliant, I love it. And I download the podcast every single day and it's like having a 15 minute cuddle every day and I don't care who knows it, I love it. <laughs> my special talent, oh my goodness, that's difficult. I can stick a cocktail stick halfway through my tongue. I don't know, is that a special talent? Um, it's because I used to have my tongue pierced, it's half closed up, but it really freaks people out at parties. <laughs> it really depends how the gig's gone. Um, sometimes I go home and cry. Uh, sometimes you, you have different because it's, it depends on the gig. If it's a gig that you're quite nervous about, you can have a lot of adrenaline. So when you come off stage, you know, the poor person, whoever's with me, often my boyfriend, I just talk at for ages because I have to get rid of this adrenaline. Um, but the more you gig and the more you're doing sort of circuit gigs that you're used to doing, it's kind of you come off stage and you go home, you know, you just on a train 20 minutes later and it sort of become a bit nonchalant about it really. Funniest person I personally know I think is my friend Ian. Uh, Ian Bajant his name is and I've known him since I was about 15 and he just always makes me laugh and if you told me when we were 15 that one of us would be a comedian I would put all my money on Ian. Um, he's just one of those people you know he's just got funny bones and just funny in the pub and, and I love him because he always cheers me up. If I'm feeling miserable I go out with Ian and it's all fine. My show is called Come As You Are. It's, um, it's basically about me. There's some jokes in it. It's probably the most personal show I've ever done. And um, it's about embracing your flaws and going, do you know what, we're all idiots, but that's all right. Thanks very much for the interview, Chortle and LY. And you can watch my full interview here.